Let's now talk about the kinds of experiments that, that we can run with, uh, with these CAN systems and, um, and what we would do with it, you know, what kind of data do we need and, and, and what, we would, what we would do with that data. Um, turns out that there's two types of experiments that we can, that we can run here with this setup. Consider one that we'll refer to as a steady state condition. And what I'm referring to there in the steady state condition is that, you know, you might have, you know, fluid control. You, you can control Q in here. And you're, and you're controlling that Q perfectly so that, that this V in here stays constant. And that's a steady state condition. It's at an equilibrium. And think about it. The flow that's coming in is exactly equal to the flow coming out. When that happens, uh, right, your model says dv dt is equal to q in minus q out, so that's equal to zero. That's actually in a system when you have a state equation, you can set all those derivatives equal to zero, and that would define a set of equations. For example, here q in minus q out would then be equal to zero as an equilibrium, and then you could solve for certain uh, properties about that system. So the system said to be in equilibrium when dv dt equals to zero by virtue of these two flows being equal to zero, right? So that's one experiment that we can run if we had a control flow coming in. Uh, think about also the flow conditions here, right? That's a, in, in, in fluids, if you look carefully at the flow coming out of that orifice, that's what you sometimes refer to as a, as a steady flow condition. Remember, steady flow means that if you were to put a, a velocity probe right in that flow and you'd watch that velocity value over time, it's, 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 stays the same, right? You can move it slightly to a different position and that velocity could be different because you know you, you could have a, a different velocity profile, but in a steady flow condition, that velocity at any one point that you look at would be constant over time because it's, it, it, that's a steady state condition, steady flow condition, it turns out. The other one is, is let's uh, say that Q in was not equal to Q out, then, then you're in a dynamic situation, right? The, the, the volume is not constant. These two guys are not the same, Q in and Q out. So now you need that dynamic equation. And, 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 and if you think about it, this really is closer to what we have, right? Whether Q in is zero or some other value, uh, they're not necessarily equal all the time. So we have a dynamic system, right? And that's another experiment that, we can, that, that we'd have to think about, right? The general dynamic experiment. And, and that actually matches more closely with what we have uh, going on in our, in, our, in our experiment. So again, as I mentioned, the steady state in general, setting the derivatives equal to zero gives you those, the state equations now become algebraic equations all equal to zero, and you can solve for something about it. So in fact, you would find out, oh, QA is equal to Q out. You can actually, remember, if that's a constant and you know that, this is now related to Remember, that's, that's actually just k times the square root of volume, right? So you can actually find k from that, because you know, you know q, right? This value would be a constant, k times the square root of v. That v would be what I'm calling here v equilibrium. And that's how you'd solve for the equilibrium volume, and that's how you could solve for k. Think about that. So you, you can solve for, for that equilibrium volume, uh, and you would set different values if you wanted. Um, the dy dynamic state that we might be interested in for our case, a simple experiment would be, hey, let's make Q in equal to zero. Let's fill the can and let's just let it empty. And that's this dynamic equation, a real simple case. And uh, V is not equal to const uh, constant because it's empty, right? Turns out, if I ask you here, can you find V of T uh, from this ODE? Think about that. And it turns out that you can, right? So if you consider that case, the empty can model, you can actually use that to design an experiment. And I'm going to show you what I mean to find K. So you start off with that ODE, and you can see that that's actually a separable, simple, nonlinear ODE. Get the integral of dv over the square root of volume is minus k minus the integral k dt. 
And you can see then, and I, I kind of like this equation here because this defines your experiment, doesn't it? It basically says that I'm going to start my experiment with some initial volume in the can, and I'm going to let it run until it empties, right? Till the volume goes to zero. At the same time, on the other side of the equation, when V naught is equal to zero, that's your, 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 your initial time, and it's going to run till it empties, and that's your final time, or emptying time. This equation can be solved with these definite integrals. You get a nice little result here. You, you find, working through the integral, that basically 2 times the square root of volume, the initial volume that you put in there is just k, and there's your k value. This little relationship here and that process of getting there is very revealing. It, at least it was to me the first time I did it. it um, it's a very nice practical application of, of things that you learn all throughout calculus and so on, and, and it, it defines an experiment. And it, and it tells you, at the end of the day, what you want to measure, right? If I can measure in one experiment, if I can put some initial volume in there and measure the final time, that's why I measure volume. That's why I measure the total time for that volume to empty. Those are cor that that correlation gives me my k, right? This is why I call this sort of a model-based experiment design because you're using the model to tell you not only what to measure but you know how to use it to to get your k, and then you use that k back in your ODE to describe uh, your system. So the model guides are selection of quantities to measure in the lab. Um, and then these can be used uh, uh, readily measured, right, using simple instruments. You don't need anything very sophisticated to measure uh, volume and, and, and uh, time to empty um, 